here. Here we go. Thank you, Valerie. Like she said, my name is Lauren Maniker, and I am a registered dietitian based in Charleston, South Carolina, and I'm very happy to be here and share some information about seafood, the nutritional powerhouse that everyone needs throughout their life cycle. Um, there are too many benefits associated with consumption of seafood to ignore. Today, I will be giving an overview of the benefits of seafood consumption for human health. And please note, if you want me to send any references for anything I discuss on the presentation, I am happy to share. I have a whole record of them. So, what is seafood? Oh, sorry, we already did that part. So, what is seafood? It's so much more than salmon. Um, when I speak with my clients and I ask if they eat seafood, sometimes they will say they don't like salmon, so they don't eat seafood. And we need to remember that seafood is so much more than salmon. Think of a variety of fish like cod and pollock, shellfish like shrimp and crab, mollusks like oysters, even octopus, squid, and seaweed come from the sea and offer a slew of health benefits. So why seafood? This group of food offers many benefits to human health. They are unique in that they contain DHA and EPA omega-3 fatty acids, and they contain high quality protein and are low in saturated fat. Also, they contain a wide variety of key nutrients, especially nowadays when we're so focused on our immune health. Um, seafood is a powerhouse when it comes to nutrients like zinc, which is very, very popular right now. So the features and benefits of seafood are so important that the expert groups, that many expert groups, excuse me, have made statements regarding seafood consumption. This slide shows a sampling of some of the statements, but they extend beyond here. And you would be challenged to find an expert group advise against eating seafood. The 2020 Dietary Guideline Advisory Committee released its final scientific report that will serve as a foundation for the development of the 2020-2025 Dietary Guidelines for Americans. The DGAC final report, comprised of 835 pages, has positive findings for seafood consumption, and this is the first time that the target audience has focused on children, and pregnant women, and it is exciting that they recognize the importance of seafood consumption. Some of the statements include that seafood consumption before pregnancy may be related to reduced risk of gestational diabetes and hypertensive disorders. Um, uh, some of the statements are listed here, but basically in a nutshell, it is important enough for them to make specific recommendations regarding seafood specifically for this population. So with all of the expert guidance surrounding seafood, we would assume that everyone is happily eating salmon and shrimp twice a week, right? Unfortunately, that isn't the case. A study by the United States Department of Agriculture found that 80 to 90% of Americans don't meet the recommendation to eat seafood, which includes fish and shellfish at least twice a week. So Valerie mentioned before, my focus is on women's health, specifically uh, pregnancy and fertility, where seafood consumption is so important and on my social media I talk about seafood consumption quite often so I did a little unofficial survey just a sampling of my audience on social media who has who have heard about the benefits of seafood consumption over and over again just curious to see if they're actually eating their seafood two times a week and again this is an unofficial Instagram survey but 31% of the women that responded eat seafood two times a week. So that's that's pretty low. So then of course, I wanted to know why that was. And I got a variety of reasons. Um, people don't think about it as a protein, like chicken and beef, it doesn't come to mind. A lot of people get sick of salmon and don't think beyond salmon. Some people are intimidated, don't know how to cook it. Um, a lot of people are avoiding going to the grocery store stores very often because of the current climate and just staying healthy and they want fresh fish. They think that fresh fish is the best option so they don't explore any other ways to get fish other than going to the seafood counter and grabbing what's there. 
um, cost. Of course, there are some that are more expensive than others, and then some say that it's hard to get fresh where they live. So a variety of reasons, and all of them are easy to tackle with a little coaching. So why should we care that people aren't eating seafood two times a week? They're nourished and they're getting a protein elsewhere, right? Unfortunately, it's just not that simple. And seafood consumption has been linked to a slew of benefits from cardiovascular to cognitive to even having a relationship to children's IQs. So mental health is the feature that I would like to start with because it's a big concern these days since our worlds have been turned upside down in 2020. Depression is a big concern for many people regardless of where they are in their life cycle. And in fact, depression symptom prevalence was more than threefold higher during the COVID-19 pandemic than before, according to data published in JAMA in September of this year. When we're depressed or anxious, we naturally resist self-care, including preparing and eating nutritious food. But good nutrition is more important than ever for those suffering from depression. And research shows that our daily food choices influence our mental health. People who have regularly eaten fish are 20% less likely than their peers to have depression. And over the past 20 years, dozens of studies evaluating more than 20,000 cases of depression have shown that eating eight to 12 ounces of fish per week, so about two to three servings, and or consuming omega-3 fish oil supplements significantly reduce the risk of major depression. And in fact, the American Psychiatric Association endorsed the fats in fish as an effective part, part of depression treatment. So just looking at the depression risk benefit with the world we're living in right now, everyone should be eating seafood twice a week, right? Unless, of course, they have fish allergy or a shellfish allergy. So moving into the life cycle and starting with the little seafoodies and pictured here is my little seafoodie who I try to feed seafood to about twice a week. Despite everything we know about the importance of seafood for growing minds, overall, kids are only getting about 40% of the omega-3, EPA, and DHA recommended fatty acids recommended by the National Academy of Medicine. So we have to get to work on those kiddos. Fish actually makes your brain bigger. Your brain is nearly 60% fat and omega-3 fatty acids found in seafood are among the most critical molecules to determine your brain's ability to perform. Kids who eat fish at least once per week may do better in school. Seafood's omega-3s help your kids' brains develop, leading to higher IQs and improved reading and spelling skills. And research shows that kids who eat fish at least once a week sleep better and have an IQ about 4.8 points higher than those who seldom or never eat fish. And then of course, there's vitamin D found in a lot of options in seafood, which helps support those kiddos' bones. So seafood isn't on the top of a lot of kids' lists of favorite foods. So it is one of those foods that you have to get a little creative with. Um, you know, you're not going to probably put some steamed oysters out and have kids go to town on it. So choosing a milder fish option is a great gateway to getting them to explore seafood and adding it to foods that they're familiar with. So if you're making a mac and cheese, you could put some pieces of salmon in the mac and cheese. Tacos are a great option or dipping sauces with your shrimp because kids just love dipping. It gives them control and it's fun. Who doesn't like dipping? So moving on from childhood to pregnancy, and pictured here is a woman doing fish pose for all of you yogis out there. Seafood is the only food rich in a healthy oil, omega-3 DHA, which is needed for your baby's brain and eye development. In fact, children whose mothers ate seafood during pregnancy may gain an average 7.7 .7 IQ points compared to those whose mothers do not eat seafood. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends children and pregnant and breastfeeding women eat one to two servings of fish per week with sustainably caught or raised fish and shellfish offered as the best choices. Seafood offers a slew of benefits during pregnancy, 
A focus should be on choosing lower mercury options throughout pregnancy. And also to note, seafood intake has also been linked to a shorter time to pregnancy when couples are trying to conceive, and there's some decent data to support that. And that goes for both men and women who are um, trying to become parents. And DHA intake has been shown to play positive roles in male fertility. So don't forget to never leave the fellows out of the equation when trying to conceive. So um, eating the seafood during pregnancy can be a challenge because some women have fear of the mercury. So that's a conversation that should be proactively brought up and explaining that you want to choose those lower mercury options, explaining what they are, what a serving size is, and just why it's so important for um, a developing baby to have those nutrients to support her pregnancy and also keeping mom healthy during that time. Um, during the first trimester, she might be feeling a little nauseated. So finding, again, those milder options, sometimes a shrimp is easy to tolerate. So being mindful of where she is in her pregnancy can be um, a very important thing for us dietitians to do as well. Um, so moving on to cardiovascular disease, seafood definitely plays a large role in cardiovascular disease and diabetes as well. Increased seafood consumption is associated with a lower risk of sudden cardiac death and a beneficial role on triglycerides, blood pressure, endothelial function, and inflammation. The type of fat in seafood, the omega-3s, helps prevent clogging of the arteries, according to the American Diabetes Association. And it has so many other benefits, including reducing inflammation, increasing insulin function, and even improving your mood with the re release of serotonin. Simply, omega-3s may improve effectiveness of insulin and reduce your risk for related complications. Studies have shown that eating non-fried fish and shellfish can reduce your risk of getting type 2 diabetes as well. And this data suggests that the more seafood you eat, the better. So again, same theme as before, seafood great. We just want to lay off on the fried options and stick with um, broiled, baked, um, canned, just other options that don't include deep fried foods. So now moving on to aging, moving through the whole life cycle. As we age, our brain health becomes more important to focus on. Eating seafood can do amazing things to cognitive health. Eating fish is associated with better brain health and better cognitive function as we age. A 2019 analysis showed 60 to 80 year olds who consumed on average at least 250 milligrams of omega-3s per week from seafood, so again, about two to three servings, scored significantly better on three indicators of cognitive health. A recent meta-analysis, which assessed 27,000 people, found that eating fish regularly was associated with a 20% lower risk of Alzheimer's type dementia. Specifically, adding a 3.5 ounce serving of fish per week was associated with an additional 12% reduction in risk for Alzheimer's type dementia. So you can think of fish as a multivitamin for your brain. So with all of the ways that eating seafood benefits humans, regardless of their stage of life, it's important to find ways to support their intake and consumption. For example, clients maybe need to be aware that if they don't have access to fresh seafood, they need to understand the nutritional difference of fresh versus frozen, which is in most cases nothing. Um, frozen seafood is often frozen shortly after it's taken from the sea and it shouldn't be viewed as an inferior product. And actually keeping things like frozen shrimp, frozen salmon, frozen scallops in your freezer can make for a very easy weeknight dinner. Just defrost them and throw them in a stir fry and or throw them on some pasta and you're good to go. Um, you could also motivate them to try canned options. If they fear canned, um, you could have that conversation with them that it's, you know, canned tuna is still tuna. It still came from the same place. It still came from the sea and it offers just a slew of benefits for bodies.
um, they may think that something beyond salmon is not an option. So they need to be made aware of all of the amazing options out there. Um, taking note of where you live and what's offered in your location. If you're landlocked, a good rule of thumb is to just take a look at what's available where you live, looking at both the fresh options and the frozen options, and then making your clients or your audiences aware of what's out there and what you could do with them. You know, sometimes people are intimidated if you say try mackerel and they never have before, they don't know what mackerel is. So if you describe it and explain it and tell them what they can do with it, then they may be more willing to incorporate that food into their lifestyle. Sorry, guys. So um, they may not like the taste of certain varieties and that's okay. You don't have to like everything, but um, like Chef Kelly will be doing, we're going to try new ways to prepare seafood, you know, trying new spices and flavors, trying new recipes, just like what I suggested doing with the kids, adults can do it too and use it in familiar recipes. So tacos are usually a universally accepted dish. So instead of having beef tacos, they could try mahi tacos or mahi quesadillas to get the seafood in. It doesn't have to be a baked plain piece of fish. It could be part of a big picture. And some people just may not view eating seafood as a priority. They think that they eat a healthy lifestyle and they eat their fruits and their veggies and seafood just isn't top of mind. And it really can be viewed as just like how you would recommend taking a supplement or a medication. You could, you could bulk it in and eating seafood two times a week can offer benefits no matter where they are in the life cycle. So um, they need to be reminded. They're not used to it. They're not in the habit of it. So hopefully what Chef Kelly is going to be sharing will give you all some inspiration that you could bring it to your audience and your clients and help them get their seafood in.